welcome back to another episode of rosary's room today is a special day if you're listening to this the day it came out this episode is releasing on my birthday (laughs) so yes march 22nd is my birthday i am 23 this year as they say jordan year or in astrology they would say 12th house perfection year Uh uh-oh dun 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 but it's all good, all vibes. I'm considering this my golden year part two because the date is 32222. So there's an angel number on that birthday. So I'm going to take that as a good sign that this year is going to be so amazing, if not better than my last year of living because 22 has treated me really well. I think 22, honestly, may have been the best year I've had despite a couple things, you know, I mean, like pandemic and life and whatever. But honestly, I had a good time being 22. Um, That was a really good golden year. I can't believe that my golden year technically is over because, you know, when you turn that age on the day, you know, 22 on the 22nd. Um, But yeah, so golden year part two, because the year matches the day I was born. So I'm claiming that it is going to be another amazing year of life for me. Today's episode is going to be a music-focused episode. I decided to go back to my roots, the start of this podcast, and um, I may have mentioned in the previous episode that I wanted to write a blog post about how I felt about Michelle and Benet's new projects that just came out um, early March. I think it was March 4th for both of them. And I decided I wanted to talk about it rather than write about it, to be honest. It just felt right, you know? It's my birthday. I've been enjoying this music and I've also been enjoying other new music as well. So I just kind of felt like, you know what, let me kick back, chillax. It's my birthday and just talk about some music because I love music and music is a big part of my life. Just to keep this one short and sweet, I am going to be talking only about Benny's project, Lychee. And keep an eye out for a part two to this where I'm going to talk about Michelle's album, After Dinner We Talk Dreams. In general, you know, when I listen to music, I like to listen to an album or an EP like straight through. It's either that or I'm making a playlist and I'm listening to my own playlist straight through. And sometimes my playlists have a story and a set track order. Sometimes they don't. Uh, Most of the time recently they don't. But I find it fun to have a curated collection of songs. I got really into playlisting lately because I've been in the middle of like a genre swap, a little genre change era. I used to be very into like R&B hip hop as I talked about in my like weird episode and also probably when I talked about music in general, probably beginning of the podcast. But I'm in a floating space now. I feel like I listen to indie music. Indie doesn't really have a set definition when it comes to the sound. I feel like we think of indie, we think like acoustic rock that's laid back or um, maybe has a a clean electric guitar and a specific image. But in reality, indie just means independent. And what tends to happen is that we have artists that start off independent and they may become a little bit more popular. Then they get picked up by a label so their music is more widespread. And then we think they're indie because of the way they sound and maybe they got big independent, but once they're signed, they're technically not independent, but their music is still considered indie. I also wanna point out that most artists nowadays start out independent because in order to get signed, you need to have music and it really helps to have an established fan base. So in order to build your own fan base without a label, to prove to a label why they should sign you, you gotta start out independent anyway. And just a little music history fact, the term indie in relation to music can date back to 1970 when independent record labels were putting out their own fresh sounding form of rock called indie rock, which at the time was synonymous with alternative rock. This might be why when you hear the term indie, you might have a specific sound in your mind because indie rock was the start of the phrase indie being used to reference a genre rather than specifically noting that somebody was independent. Nowadays, indie technically means you're independent and it doesn't have a specific sound. As I'm going to talk about in this episode, a lot of indie musicians now do have a very alternative and experimental sound. Now, Benny is actually signed to Republic Records, which is a subdivision of Universal Music Group, which, if you didn't know, is one of the three big major labels of the music industry. The other two are Sony and Warner. So why am I talking about indie music and independent artists when Benny isn't independent? 
well, I felt like it. <laughs> and I felt like the distinction had to be made because a lot of experimental and alternative music is referenced as indie. And I just thought it was cool to talk about it because people just don't always know. So if you didn't know, let me know that I just taught you. But if you already knew, then let me know that you knew. Also on the topic of independent artists and getting your name out there, I did want to mention social media is a very important part of this. The accessibility to production tutorials and I see music marketing tips on like TikTok, you know, these things really help fuel the creativity of newcomers and people in my generation specifically. With my generation being so awesome and creative and talented and powerful, you know, Gen Z, we are just, we are turning the world on its head. Like we, I don't even know how to describe the amount of change in the world, Generation Z. My generation is bringing. And one way this shows up is through the music. New music coming out, very highly experimental with a very distinctive sound. One of my favorite things to do starting that I started a couple months ago in 2021 was to go and see what was up with Spotify's pre-curated playlists. And the playlist that quickly became my favorite is Lorem. And so within the playlist of Lorem, I have started finding new music that I liked and listening to new artists. Although to be honest, when it, in the case of Michelle and Benet, I didn't discover them through Lorem. The way I discovered both of these artists actually has to do with the fact that I went to a show at Babies All Right in Brooklyn and I thought it was cool. Went back to another show. So originally I saw Amber Lucid. She was amazing. And then I saw Dreamer Boy like two weeks later because I liked the venue. Um, and then I went with a friend. So we saw Dreamer Boy and in the process of preparing for that concert, because we were going just to go to Babies All Right because it's a pretty well-known venue, I discovered Michelle through <laughs> this was like after the show the one of the openers was Issa Reyes and Issa Reyes has a song with Michelle and I really liked that song so I'm like who's Michelle <laughs> and then I started listening to Michelle and then I really got into their stuff so there's that also Dreamer Boy had collaborated with Benet with the song Are You Letting Go and I vaguely I didn't really know of Benet but I once I like looked into her I realized like oh she has that like big viral hit from TikTok and you know that was the same thing with looking into Dreamer Boy. He has this big viral hit, Puppy Dog, and then we got Super Lonely, and now Michelle has like Syncopate. Like these are artists with like one major smash, viral, TikTok. That tends to be how Lorem goes with a lot of like viral music. That's why we have like Pink Pantherist rising up and other artists in that vein. We have Gen Z artists who may have a distinctive sound that are really smashing up the world, you know? Like I said, I don't think I really have a specific favorite genre because music is so genreless these days. I feel like it's hard to really assign something to one box because of the way newer artists are being creative and we're combining genres and creating new sounds and maybe have a distinct style. I've noticed a lot of trends in music, one of them being the drum and bass rhythm pattern. Autotune has been big for years, but I feel like it's maintained its well-knownness. Like we're still getting autotune. We're getting these like trap influences and in drums. So at the same time, you hear a lot of drum and bass type patterns for like the dance and ravier type songs. And other songs we're getting still like electronic trap patterns lots of synths, but also guitars are coming back. Like I said, it's very hard to pinpoint what is going on right now in the state of music. I guess I would just call it alternative because it's not your typical bubblegum pop, even though pop is still big. It's always been, it's, it's literally pop. So how can it not be? So I just wanted to shout out um, the fact that two albums that I'm not talking about today, but that I have been adding to my rotation is Rex Orange County Who Cares which just came out before I recorded this episode I think it came out Friday if I'm not mistaken it's a good project um, I heard the song amazing through Lorem and I liked it I'm like this Rex Orange County's new stuff gives me very good vibes it makes me feel happy it's like a sunshiny day I'm just enjoying it and then also there is Igor by Tyler the Creator is up there in my new stuff in my rotation because somebody recommended it to me and I liked it and I really like how Igor tells a story in the track list like that's an album I would not shuffle and I feel like <laughs> if only I had listened to it when it came out I know it came out in 2019 um, I probably would have really enjoyed it unfortunately I just didn't <laughs> that was a time where I was still in my R&B heavy phase 
you know, heavy, like, SZA, Jhene Aiko, Kehlani type music. I know it's honestly not too far off from Tyler, the Creator's music, but I just wasn't there at the time. It was a time of my life. I'm not going to say anything negative, but it was not the best time of my life. So, uh, ooh, I always do that, like, every episode. But anyway. So, yeah, those are two albums I enjoy. Who Cares by Rex Orange County and Igor by Tyler, the Creator. Fun fact, Tyler, the Creator was featured on a song in the album Who Cares, and it was cool. Anyway, let's get into today's topic. And it might be clear that originally I was going to talk about both Michelle and Benny's new projects, but I decided to just talk about Benny today. I also will acknowledge that I pronounced it wrong <laughs> sometimes. I didn't realize till like halfway through the episode I decided to find out the proper pronunciation and it's Benny. So if I say Bene, I'm talking about Benny and I apologize for not checking before I spoke because I thought it was Benny originally and then I gaslit myself to thinking it was Bene because I found out her last name was Bennett so I'm like that makes sense but it's supposed to be pronounced Benny. So yes, today I'm talking about Benny Lychee or Lychee because I used to say Lychee, but I went to a bubble tea store once and they looked at me funny and I found out it's actually Lychee. So let's talk about it. I'm going to go track by track and just give my thoughts about her music. First track on the EP is Beach Boy. This song has the second most plays on the project. I believe it was a single, but personally, the first song I heard as a single was Does It Matter, which I'll talk about later. So let's talk about Beach Boy. It's got some slide guitars, I noticed, probably a reference to that like beachy feel, you know, that Hawaiian like SpongeBob. It's a cute song. It's got the natural vocals, acoustic guitars, but it feels dark because of the double entendre that's going on she's saying be my beachy boy like you want to think a cute dude like maybe a surfer dude there's like sand and you have a good day at the beach but it's also sounds like she's saying bitch be my bitch boy be my bitch baby which is um probably the point i think she straight up says bitch because it really sounds like it it's a funny song cute talking about beach boys when you really mean be my bitch. <laughs> Up next, we have Soft Side. Soft Side's on Lorem right now, so that might get it a little bit more traction than the others. I honestly like this song. It's a bit more electronic. It has the auto tune. So, something Benny does is she switches up her vibe between a more natural rockish sound and the more electronic trap sound sometimes, or more like hip hop influenced. We definitely saw that duality on Super Lonely, and that might have been why the song was so successful. It was like a perfect encapsulation of her sound. So having her break out with that song kind of helps her establish herself like, yeah, this is my sound. I'm going to combine different genres. But yeah, for some reason, the song gives me like green and like dark vibes. I'm not one of those people who claims to have synesthesia that I can hear sounds and be like, this is a color. But for some reason, I was just thinking about colors when I was listening. Um, probably also because I associate the Lorem playlist itself with colors. I like the drum pattern on this one. It has this like fashion catwalk type of beat. I don't know why I associate this beat with that. I think it's because for some reason I have an association of like that kind of beat that um, and some like European fashion show type thing. But cool. It gives this like confidence. I like that she's in the position of like, I want to see her soft side. I'm confident and like in control here. But like, you know, open up to me, be vulnerable. It just I like it. I like it a lot. And I really like the vibe. It also has cool like bass and keys. Honestly, this song is going to be on my playlists. You know, I like sounds, of course. Um, there's a lot of nice sounding songs. I've also been paying a lot of attention to like the message of a song and does it align with what I want to be hearing? I feel like for so long I've used music to reflect my current mood and having my current mood mostly be negative for a while. I listened to a lot of music that reflected that and it kind of kept me in that space while in a way singing along to songs about sad things or expressing pain helps. I also am starting to use music as a form of manifestation of like I am happy and also songs that just make me feel happy are good for maybe some days I'm not feeling great. Put on a song with good vibes and I'm just like, you know what? Good vibes. The sun is shining. There's a gentle breeze. It's springtime now. So I like that a lot. Soft Side is probably going on my manifesting playlist. <laughs> I should make a separate playlist for manifesting and for good vibes. Up next, Hurt You Gus. When I first saw this, I thought it was about Gus Dapperton. 
Um, fun fact, Gus Dapperton graduated from Drexel University, and I also graduated from Drexel University, so <laughs> I did not know him while I went there, though. I did not ever interact. Not that I know of. I don't think I've ever really interacted with Gus Dapperton, but I thought that was really cool that he went to the same school I went to. In the Genius Song explanation, it states clearly that the song is not about Gus Dapperton, though, so we don't really know who Gus is. But yeah, Hurt You, Gus. Chill vibe atmosphere the meaning kind of hits it would have hit for me a while ago it's about like not really being ready for a relationship so you're like sorry I'm hurting you but gdg thankfully I'm not in that phase anymore I used to be like that but now I am ready I am open I can show my soft side and be confident so um but it's cool that the song exists next is never ending that distorted guitar with the deep sounds it gives me amber lucid vibes if you know head down it starts with that type of guitar so i liked that the first verse has a very like running out of breath delivery and at first i was like why is she running out of breath then i realized it was probably on purpose because the song is called never ending so it kind of sounds like she's just talking to talk and just saying so much nice vibe switch in the song for the chorus with like the heavy trap comes in and the sound feels a bit lighter and so um, I like the message, especially when she's talking about moving forward and the way the auto tune kind of goes up a little bit. I really like that. Next, Marry Myself. This is probably my top song from the project right now, just because I got chills listening to it. Like when I finally like absorbed everything, because it can be overstimulating to have such like unique music playing. You got to kind of be like, OK, you know, we do I always expect the rock vibe or do I expect the auto tune? So it took, it took me some time to like get into it. But Mary Myself, the way she sets up this like story, when she talks about it being a scene from a movie, then it's like, what are you doing? And it's just a really cool vibe. It makes me want to dance. It has that like drum and bass type drum pattern, which was a very big trend in 2021 that we've seen with like Pink Panthers and a lot of rave type music, which I enjoy that. It just kind of makes me feel like sparkles are raining down and there's like fun neon lights and you just kind of want to vibe a little bit I don't know how to describe the like dance movement I'm doing but your shoulders are rotating I don't know man but it makes you feel nice <laughs> to have this kind of music so uh, definitely top two alongside does it matter so like I said does it matter is the first song I heard from this project because of Lorem and I enjoyed the song a lot. Her voice is so nice on this song. Like, I love the opening, the way the song just starts. Like, you hear the guitar just for, like, one measure, and then she's like, mm, what's it like? I love it. It does have a darker vibe to it, but I am fine with it, you know? I think when I say about, like, vibes of songs, I tend to stay away from, like, you broke my heart, I'm so sad, breakup type stuff because like I'm over it <laughs> um, and this one is more about mental health so it has that relatable factor of like do I just you know I mean the, the lyrics are like if I medicate would it help me I know this doesn't matter and it's just like she just talks so well about her own mental health it's about her own OCD um, so that's a great way of being like honest and open about stuff in a way that I when I made music this time last year did not quite understand yet um, boundaries in music but the way the song is delivered it I feel like it focuses more on the sound and it's not too detailed it's more so just like the song talks about very typical experiences with OCD like when you see things or now you have to check the oven or like, let me make sure the windows close and stuff like that. I personally don't have OCD, but I have heard it be described this way. So it makes sense that the song is very typical about that experience so that people might understand it a little bit better. And the last song on the project is Make You Sick, which is not my favorite. It gives me milkshake vibes, like that song, my milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. It's something about the instrumental and the whole like, I'm a bad bitch. No, you can't have this. I feel like it's just a TikTok song, it might have been made to become viral. It's very experimental compared to everything else. Like even though the whole genre fusion thing is experimental in itself, there's um, certain sounds that are like dark, dirty, electronic, and then the vocal chops. You can't really understand what she's saying. And there's like vibe switches. The song is like over six minutes. I think that's cool. Experimental vibes, awesome. 
And the sounds really remind me of the game Portal. I like the bridge portion toward the end where it sounds different and it feels almost brighter. And it's like the filtered vocal that kind of layers over the song is still there. But I think what they did was they went from a minor key to a major key. And there's also probably instruments in a different range that doesn't have a darker feel because it's lower. These ones are a little bit higher, I feel like. So it does a good job of switching up the vibe for the bridge. And that's my favorite part of the song. So overall, with Benny's music, especially with the project Lychee, there is a blend, like I said, of the rock sounds, there's guitars, there's different types of drum beats. We got drum and bass. We got this like, I don't know how to describe that, that like fashion catwalk type beat. We have trap beats and just like different things going on. So I think it's cool how she is trying different things out. At first, I kind of felt like it was a little inconsistent, but that was because I hadn't gotten into her sound and been able to recognize that like she's not just throwing a bunch of stuff together. Like that's truly her sound is to be dynamic and switch things up. No two Benny songs are going to sound exactly the same. And I think that's a good thing. It shows a lot of range in her music and ways that we can appreciate it more. And when it comes to the overall story that's being told through the track listing of this project, I feel like it's not necessarily each song flows into the next one in a cohesive story, but there's more so just themes that I feel like are put together and going through track by track and reading about what she says about the songs, it makes sense. It just kind of feels like some songs were put together and this was the project. So we start off with Beach Boy, you're in a relationship, but you're maybe not happy, you're not satisfied. So you're just like, let's have fun. But at the same time, be my bitch for a day. You know, there's a lyric like, you're quiet and I'm loud. You know, there's differences, but you're trying to make it work. Soft Side kind of shows an unrealistic longing, lingering for somebody to be vulnerable with you. Maybe something that's missing from a relationship. Um, there's a, a lyric, my friends say I should find someone a little less detached, that I want something I cannot have. So that kind of shows that that idea when it comes to relationships. You want to be vulnerable, but maybe you're just not picking the right people. Hurt You Gus, she made a quote about it, her being not ready for a relationship. But once I read the lyrics, I'm like, oh, it's about the dude like having trust issues like the other person. So it's just kind of about like relationships not working Never ending is just a breakup song, dealing with those emotions, it's over. And then Marry Myself is the self-love after all of that, loving yourself and maybe deciding that you're not going to commit to anybody right now because you're committed to yourself. And I really like that. And then after Marry Myself is Does It Matter, which I feel like makes sense because maybe in her time alone, she's forced to reckon with her own flaws, I guess, are mental health, you know, dealing with OCD and actually having to confront things without a partner by your side that you can confide in emotionally. So yeah, and then I just found out Make You Sick is actually a bonus track from her last album that was made for a fashion show. So it was meant to be experimental. I think the original song was a lot longer. Um, to be honest, I haven't found it yet. It came out on the CD version of Hey You X. That's the track listing, I feel like it makes sense. We got a bunch of songs about relationships not being great, then Marry Myself, and then Does It Matter, which are songs more about her own personal experience. So not much of a fully weaved story, but I feel like it makes sense. I wanted to appreciate Benny and talk about how much I like this project and really highlight a new Gen Z artist who's really breaking through right now and just had a really cool project drop. So yeah. I know that I originally started the podcast doing like music, but also TV shows and video games and kind of left that idea behind. But I felt like bringing it back because I like I said, I was going to do a blog post, but then I was like, no, nah, I want to talk about it instead. So I feel like moving forward, I might do like more music focused stuff as opposed to like bringing back the whole entertaining escapism video games and TV shows thing. So I might talk about music more. Love music is part of my life while also talking about other topics relating to life, as I've been doing with Rosary's Room. Thanks for listening. If you're a fan of Benny, what did you think about the project? Do you like the genre blending? Do you like the messaging of the songs? Like, how do you feel about Benny's music? Let me know. Also, how do you feel about Generation Z music, the new wave of genre blending and stuff like that? Anyway, that's it for today. 
uh, thank you so much for listening to Rosary's Room. And I will see you next time. If you want to send me any happy birthday wishes, uh, my Instagram is Rosary's Room. So just say happy birthday. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for listening and catch you next time. Bye.